4 Pro in the house. Let's go. Yeah, finally picked up my M4 MacBook Pro from the Apple Store. The configuration that I went for was the regular 116 inch M4 Pro with uh, 14 core CPU and 20 core GPU. Uh, it has about 24 GB RAM and 512 GB hard disk. The total cost came about 3730 Canadian dollars, including taxes. Now, a quick ASMR unboxing. I went for the space black and feel it is the popular choice this year. Comparing it with my previous silver i9 MacBook Pro, the space black feels so much more better. Uh, with the i9 Mac, it was dongle city all along. I hated the fact that I have to carry a dongle all the time. The M line of MacBooks, of course, is more practical with an SD card slot and an HDMI port. When I got my i9 MacBook Pro back in Jan of 2020, I thought it's gonna perform great for the next three to four years, but I was so freaking wrong because Apple announced their M line of chips in uh, about uh, June 2020, I guess, and launched their first uh, M1 MacBook Pro in November of 2020. And uh, at that time, my MacBook Pro, the i9 version, was not even a year old, and it already lost a lot in terms of performance or battery when comparing to the M1. So I didn't expect that monumental jump and increase. So from then on, I've always wanted to upgrade to a M series chip, but never felt justified because my workflow is in that too demanding. And uh, the i9 kept uh, performing great for whatever that I threw at it. Uh, just the battery life was a problem, the heating and the fan noise, but that's all okay because I pretty much used it uh, as a desktop replacement so it was okay i'm sure there are a lot of users who are on the same boat as me who want to upgrade from their uh, 2019 or 2020 i9s or i7 macbook pros and uh, these laptops are definitely not cheap so you would want to justify yourself uh, in in buying your new uh, m line of uh, macbook pros but then uh, this video should help you out with that it's not just for you it's also for me to justify my purchase as well so this is going to be more of a comparison between my old workhorse the i9 macbook pro uh, versus the m4 pro macbook pro so i'm going to use it uh, to my workflow i'm not gonna uh, do crazy benchmarks or anything i'm gonna keep it light and how i do in my workflow so let's see how it goes i've listed down all the chapters for you so you could skip to the part that you want to uh, uh, view so that's up to you so let's get going well let's start with the boot test <laughs> No surprises here, the M4 Pro beats out the i9 by a considerable margin. Let's do the Blackmagic disk speed test. The i9 clocks about 2800 writes and 2700 reads, as opposed to the M4 Pro, which doubles it, clocking around 5500 writes and 5100 reads, which is actually fantastic. Now let's jump on to the display. Comparing both the displays together, the M4 Pro MacBook Pro's ProMotion display is miles better than the i9. The HDR video looks so stunning in the M4 Pro with the brightness going up all the way to 1600 nits. The contrast ratio and the colors pop so much more in the M4 Pro. The difference is night and day. The camera might not do enough justice, but you have to see them in real life to understand. And honestly, it is so much more better than the i9 MacBook Pro. Uh, let's fire up the Final Cut Pro editor to check the performance. Uh, I reckon most of the Mac users would be using Final Cut Pro to edit their footages, but uh, I personally use DaVinci though, but let's give it a try and see how it works. Uh, I have some 4K HDR footage from my iPhone and a couple of 8-bit footage and 10-bit footage from my Sony A6700. Uh, I usually edit with uh, maybe a few effects and titles, nothing too crazy or fancy. So I'm gonna keep it as is how I use my workflow. Uh, so playing an 8-bit video, no problems at all. Playing a 10-bit video seems all right. No issues with both of them. Uh, scrubbing also works very well. No issues in the smoothness at all. Uh, let me add some titles and effects to it. Again, both are able to handle it pretty well, no issues. Uh, I do not see any drop frames on either devices. 
Uh, so let's go ahead and add some effects to it. Let's add the mirror effect. Uh, I don't think uh, there's problems with any of them. Both play them pretty well. So now that we have bought 10 minutes of footage in both the Max, uh, let's time the export to see how much better the M4 Pro is. Whoa, what just happened? The i9 finished it under 2 minutes and 5 seconds and the M4 Pro took around 2 minutes and 55 seconds. I'm not even sure why the M4 was not faster. Okay, I'll have to try this again because I don't, I don't believe this result. Start. The fan noise has been crazy and uh, because we just started Final Cut Pro and this ramps up the fan really really high uh, at a very very high RPM and here the M4 Pro on the other hand does not seem to care or does not seem to even spin up the fans or at a very very low rate this is this is what I love about the M4 Pro uh, or the M4 or all of the M liner chips and these have like spectacular battery life pretty much remains way too cold uh, I can't see any heat here but this one I don't have a device to show you the temperature but then you have to just trust me for my word and it's pretty hot over uh, this section and here as well and the bottom as well would be a bit too hot Oh my god, what is happening? This is a 10 minute 4K footage and how is the M4 Pro not pulling ahead? The i9 finished it in 2 minute and 1 second and the M4 Pro took about 2 minutes and 41 seconds. I believe it has to do something about the energy power mode. Uh, it is currently in automatic uh, and I feel performance scores remains fairly inactive uh, during the last two exports but then I might be wrong uh, maybe this is a way to conserve more battery uh, but I can say one thing for sure the i9 MacBook Pro is crushing the M4 Pro okay I don't think things are going well I have added more clips though and extended the footage length to 14 minutes I've changed the energy mode to high power uh, now let's see what happens fingers crossed my partner is already questioning my addition to the upgrade so let's see how it goes Ah, this is more like it. Now the M4 Pro finishes it off well under 2 minutes. It's about 1 minute and 55 seconds. And the i9 finishes at 6 minutes and 17 seconds. So that's your real world case. I don't know how that uh, i9 pulled it off for the first two. But this one seems more like it. Now moving on to some browser benchmarks. I've fired up the speedometer. And uh, that clearly... Uh, the M4 wins it, uh, tripling the score of what the i9 has. Let's check the webcam. As you can see, the difference is pretty vast. And uh, it was not bad in the first place. It's it's just comparatively, this has been the case and it's, it's so much more better. And it also supports center stage. As you can see here, uh, there's center stage. What it does is it makes sure that my uh, face stays in the center of the video so anytime you're on a webcam call or a zoom call or your team's meeting then you're, you're always center stage which is great and if i move across move around it still makes sure i'm i'm in the center of the frame so that's that's pretty neat but there's nothing that uh you know this one supports it's pretty standard uh, going by the quality this quality is much much nicer and I could also blur my background to different screens and everything uh, studio lighting if that's what you like and or portrait mode as well if in case that's something which you which you love so this doesn't give us any options for that and if I take off the center stage and then uh, 
I also have the desk view, which I don't have support for in the i9. Uh, the desk view is pretty handy when it comes to, you know, your product reviews or anything that you want to do. So that's something which you can, you know, um, uh, get started with even if you don't have an overhead camera. This is going to help uh, you in those situations. So I'm not going to start that right now. I'm going to still compare uh, the videos of both of them to see a record. Okay, this is how it is. A difference Let's see if I if I'm here and this is how it is clearly a lot more different my red t-shirt uh, is more crisp and clear the contrast is a lot better there's a lot of noise in the i9 webcam We're all done with the tests, some surprising results. Uh, however, let's check the battery percentage. I don't expect any surprises here. Uh, the i9 is about 37%, which is pretty decent, but the M4 Pro is at 90%. That is impressive. I would gladly give my money to Apple just for the battery life. That's amazing. I'm sure this is going to be a great upgrade in every possible way if you're coming from an Intel-based Mac. And if you're one of those who always think about uh, upgrading to a new M series line of chips, then uh, I don't think there's a better year than this year. Uh, so please go ahead and buy yourself an M4 Pro. It's definitely worth it. Hope you would have liked this video. Hope you have enjoyed the content. Let me know in the comments below if in case you'd like to see some more of these tests between your i9 or i7 MacBook Pros and I can gladly help you out. Uh, please do subscribe to my channel because I'm gonna have a lot of fitness, a lot of lifestyle and a lot of uh, other tech content that I'm gonna prepare for you guys. So hopefully you get subscribed and thanks for watching. Thank you. This is Arvind signing off. Bye.